Hi everyone, this is Renee from Meadowlark Mystic and I am doing a tag that I've been wanting to do for a pretty long time now. Um, let's see, so the tag is from Can no, from Thea at Garden Goddess Tarot and then Candy did it or or maybe they did it together. I mean, I know they did it together but I'm not sure if they came up with it together or should have asked. <laughs> anyway, so the tag is um, Garden Arcana and they took the viewers into their gardens and and showed them plants you know in real in real garden space um, I'm not able to do that for um, a few reasons but what I wanted to do actually and I'll put the um, the list of all the plants down in the description box so um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to use this deck where's the box uh, the New Century Tarot to to go through and to assign the the Arcana plants um, that I felt resonated with the energy of the Major Arcana. So a little background for those of you who don't know, um, I do have some advanced training in Western herbalism. I got some um, like an herbal certificate from the California School of Herbal Studies. So I do know a little bit about um, using herbal medicine. This video is absolutely not medical advice whatsoever. It's just an exploration of Western herbalism with the major arcana. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there. Um, I don't have a lot of abilities to edit, nor do I have the inclination <laughs> to do that. Uh, so I'm just going to tell you what I think, for me, the, the herb that kind of came forward when I thought about the energy of the card and then a tiny bit about the um, the medicinal uses of that. So it should be fun. I mean, you know, I'm not like really overthinking it because, you know, there, there are lots of ways you can do that. There's even an herbal tarot. So if you're super interested in it. Okay. So for the Fool card, I really thought that Dandelion was a great um, plant ally to kind of exemplify the energy of the Fool card because the little tiny um, seeds with those kind of umbrella, upside down umbrellas that they just, they go everywhere and they're so beautiful um, and whimsical when they kind of catch on the wind and then they fly all over the place. Um, so I, I felt like that had a lot of Fool energy to it. Also when I see how vigorously people try to get rid of dandelions. Um, I often say to myself how foolish they are um, because dandelion is an amazing, um, it's an amazing spring tonic, which means the, the fresh leaves when they come out in the spring, if they're in a place that's not sprayed, um, you can make it into a tea or just have it in a, the leaves in a salad and it's really cleansing for the system. Um, but people spend so much time and spray toxic chemicals to get rid of it. So I really thought that the dandelion exemplified the fool. And then for the magician, um, you know, with the, the way that the magician usually, not so much in this card, but the way that the magician is, um, has the one hand up and one hand down, like you can, this, this particular magician is kind of intricate, but he's got a wand or they've got a wand pointing that way and a wand pointing this way. So it's kind of like the, um, the bridge between above and below, you know, as above, so below. And with, with m what I think about with the magician is a lot of intention, like really strong intention, especially if you're doing anything magical. And so the, um, the plant that really um, came to my mind was cedar, arborvitae. Um, they're evergreen, they're steadfast, like they're you know, they're reaching up into the sky and kind of that, that pointed um, endeavor. And um, you have to have kind of a longevity about you if you ever do want to manifest something magically. You know, you have to like put in the effort. And I think the shadow side of the magician is kind of the trickster energy or the um, like he doesn't want to put in the effort. He wants to just trick you and kind of take your money. But in terms of like a more um, 
a magician with higher integrity, it would require, um, you know, sticking it through and being steadfast. And that's more for me like the evergreen nature of cedar. Cedar is a very ancient tree. Its relationship to humans go back uh, thousands of years. Uh, the Middle East um, used to have Mesopotamia, uh, specifically used to have just forests of cedar. Um, and I think the relationship between cedar and humanity is long and intricate, especially magical, the magical relationship. Um, so that's why I picked cedar for the magician. And then for the high priestess, I figured you know what, what cedar looks like and you know what dandelions look like. For the high priestess, I chose moonflower and I just wanted to show you a picture of it. Um, moonflowers, they are related to morning glories, which is also kind of a powerful magical plant, but also very poisonous. Um, and so you don't want to mess with it. But in terms of moonflower for the high priestess, there's something very magical about flowers that bloom at night. And these flowers, they only bloom for a few hours and then they, um, you know, crumple up. And I made a flower essence of the moonflower. And then I took some just to like check it out and see what it was. And it was a very, it's kind of the strange, um, I was going to say oxymoron, but that's not the word I'm looking for. So it's like powerful and gentle at the same time. And the more you open to it, the more powerful it becomes. So that was the kind of energy of the flower essence. And that's, that's kind of how I feel about the high priestess and her power. Like if you come directly at this energy and you're like, tell me your secrets. I want to know everything, <laughs> uh, which is kind of like this energy. Um, you know, you're not going to see behind the veil. You're not going to understand the subtleties that are kind of like the magical threads that run throughout the universe. So the moonflower in that sense really kind of spoke to me about the high priestess. So that was the um, plant that I chose for the high priestess. Okay, so that's the first three. I don't know how many I'm gonna get to, but we'll see. And then we have the empress, the emperor, and the Hierophant. This deck is a little weird. It's a little weird for me to have chosen this deck. I'm not exactly sure why I did, but it just seemed, I don't know. <laughs> I was just going with it. Um, okay, so for the Empress, I have Clover. For the Emperor, I have Thistle. And then for the Hierophant, I have Pine. Um, so we'll go through those. I know this is kind of boring because I'm not really showing you anything interesting. So I guess you really have to be devoted if you're going to watch this video. <laughs> okay, so red clover. Um, you know, you see red clovers, and this would be true for white clovers too. You see them actually in weedy lawns, you know, lawns that are not just um, maintained to have no weeds in them. So what I'm saying is it's often... Um, considered a weed, but it's also um, a forage crop for um, for animals, for cows, and um, and horses too, but horses can get sick if they um, eat too much of it. Anyway, so particularly the red clover, it's really beautiful. Um, it's got a beautiful flower, and it smells really good, and the bees love it. And it's really good for fertility issues. Um, also it's just, this is what it looks like. Um, and then, you know, the clover is like, like a lucky clover kind of clover. Um, so the red clover itself makes a really delicious tea, uh, easy to make and, and, and yummy. And it's easy to grow and bees love it. It's kind of a no brainer. I don't understand why anyone would want to take out red clover from their garden, but it's very, um, so not only is it good for you with nutrients, the bees love it, it's beautiful, it's soft underfoot so you can walk on it. And also, 
it is a nitrogen fixer, which means it pulls nitrogen out of the atmosphere from the nodules in its roots and converts it into nitrogen that's available for the plant and other plants. So it's just such an amazing, helpful, nourishing, increases fertility uh, plant that it's kind of a no-brainer for the empress. So for the emperor, I chose thistle. Now thistle isn't really a plant. Thistle is a type of, uh, like a category of plant. There's probably hundreds and hundreds of thistles uh, in the world. Um, it's also, there's a thistle. It's one of the emblems. Actually, I'm going to be talking about this specific thistle later, but it's one of the emblems of um, Scotland. In any case, uh, so I chose thistle for the emperor because thistles move into um, an ecosystem when it's been degraded and not respected. And what I mean by that is maybe overgrazed or all the trees have been cut down and then erosion has taken place. And so the soil is having a really hard time uh, staying. You know, you're going to get some bare rocks exposed. So often thistles will move into that kind of area and they create like an impenetrable uh, thicket. So things are, are, they're trying to hold things in place and create kind of a structure and stability so that fertility maybe can move back in. And to me, that's very emperor energy. Thistles are also prickly, uh, defensive in nature. And that's also energy that I um, associate with the emperor. Um, there's lots of different types of thistles, like I said, and they are almost always considered invasive weeds, attacked, uh, ripped out, poisoned, when in essence, I feel like it's just the earth trying to protect itself. So thistles are for the emperor. And then for the hierophant, I chose the pine tree for a few reasons. Again, we have that kind of intermediary between the mundane and the spiritual. Um, and the pine trees are evergreen, and so they also have that upward reaching movement, but then also, you know, down. The interesting thing about pines is their roots are not very deep. So in terms of, the way I, th I think of this in terms of um, symbolically is that a traditional system which is what the Hierophant often represents, is only as strong as the people who believe in it. So it's not so much about the roots going down deep is the roots going out wide and holding on to other pine trees. So often when you see a pine tree, if it's alone, um, there are exceptions to this, but it's, it's vulnerable to falling over, to being pulled out by the wind um, because it doesn't have other trees to kind of like hold it together. So I kind of feel like that's very, um, you know, traditional spiritual traditions that I see in this card. Uh, pine trees are beautiful, not only in their scent, but also the med medicine they give. The um, young leaves or needles um, are high in vitamin C, useful when animals and people are coming out of um, winter. I guess more for people because animals often make their own vitamin C. Um, it's a beautiful smudge. It's, um, it's useful. You can make furniture out of it. I mean, pine furniture is not coveted, but it's still um, beautiful. Um, it, when I think of a pine tree, I just think of community because there's so many uses for pine. And then also pine is often used. Pine and fir and spruce are used in holiday celebrations in my community. So that's why I chose pine for the Hierophant. So that's it. Okay, so the next group of three, we have the Lovers, the Chariot, and Strength. And so for me, the Lovers card is a, is a, is a card about choice. It's a card about the heart. It's a card about um, doing the hard thing in deference to the health of the relationship, to the union, to the heart uh, space. I'm trying to find 
Hawthorne. Okay, so, well, I'll just move it down here. So this is the Hawthorne flower. Oops, I didn't mean to click on that. Ugh. That's the Hawthorne flower, and this is the Hawthorne berries, which is, I'm gonna be referencing, and they don't really, I'm gonna, I should put the tree in here. The tree itself is really not that, um, you know, it's like, this, this is the tree. It doesn't get that big and it grows pretty slow. Um, and it's not evergreen. But the thing about, and we're over here. So the thing about hawthorns are they're very spiritual trees. Um, in many traditions of peoples in the UK and even on the continent in like Germany and France, they are connected to magic and the heart. <clears throat> So in herbal medicine, Western herbal medicine, and actually I think in Eastern herbal medicine too, the berries are used for a tonic for the heart. Um, and then the flowers can also be used to strengthen heartbreak. Um, and then the, the tree itself, the wood is very hard and there's it's got pretty big thorns. So to me it speaks to um, kind of the how relationships can be taken for granted, right? Like, oh, you know, that's the person that's there all the time. But if you don't put in the work, then they can, um, they can have thorns and they can be sick and they can have not that heart giving, heart supporting um, potential that they actually do have. And so Hawthorn as a magical tree and also a heart tonic is a good, um, I think, match for the lovers. The next card is the Chariot, and this card to me speaks of very intense focus, direction, and speed. <clears throat> and so the plant that I immediately thought of was green tea. Um, I drink green tea every morning, and um, it has a long tradition in Buddhism, specifically Zen monks. <laughs> There's a pretty gross well, it's kind of gross tale about the, the way they found out about the, um, the properties of green tea. I think it was in Japan. It might have been China because China has the older Zen tradition, even though when you think of Zen Buddhism, you think of uh, Japan. Something about this monk was trying to stay awake. He couldn't stay awake, you know, because he was meditating. So he cut his eyelids off they fell down and became a tea plant. <laughs> so it's pretty gross, but it speaks to focus and achievement. In this sense of the monk, his achievement was to stay awake and eventually, I guess, get enlightenment. For our purposes, we're just talking about the chariot and you know, if you're gonna be going really fast, you better be focused on where you're going. Otherwise, you know, you're going nowhere fast. So green tea for the chariot. And then for the strength card, uh, one of my favorite plants um, that is also considered a weed, a lot of my favorite plants are considered weeds, is plantain. And plantain, and I'll put the, um, I'll put the Latin names at the bottom in case you're in a, you know, you're in a different, you're in a country where you can just use the Latin and it has a different common name. Plantain is so amazing as a medicine. This is what it looks like. I'm sure everyone has seen it. It also invades land, uh, uh, grass, uh, lawns, just like dandelion and just like clover. Um, it is hugely, hugely helpful when you have an infection that is starting to kind of lean over into sepsis, like it's getting into the the blood or like moving into um, a more a larger problem um, again I'm not giving any medical advice I'm just telling you what I've used it for you can find it anywhere you know you only want to collect it from places that you know have not been sprayed you also want to you know wash it really well um, for obvious reasons but I find plantain is such a gentle amazing herb that draws out poison and that's why I actually when I think of the strength card not only do I think of kind of the 
the balance that we have to do between our rational mind and our animal instincts. I also think about how can we treat our animal cells, our animal bodies, with kindness and firm control, but still kindness. And so I think of removing, I know she's got her hand in his mouth, but I always think of her removing some kind of like infected tooth or, you know, the, the story of the thorn in the paw. Like often the, you know, the animal is, is lashing out because it's in pain. And often in our own inner psyche or in our relationships with others, we are lashing out because of things that we haven't faced, things that are kind of getting putrid. So that's why I chose plantain for the strength card. Okay, where do we at? Where do we at? Let me look at my timer. Okay, we're at 20 minutes. I guess I'll do three more and then I'll do the other three later. Not the other three, I mean the other group. <laughs> okay, so we are at the hermit, the wheel, and is that right? No, no, no. Oh, here, justice. Uh, okay. So for the hermit, what did I write down here? Oh, yeah. I have, so I have sage, um, holy basil, or tulsi, and then for justice, I have the rose. So I'll, let, I'll show this the hermit card a little bit. Uh, I don't know how good the light is. So sage, this is just garden sage. Um, I think it's salvia officinalis. I'll, I'll, again, I'll put the Latin at the bottom. It is a really great herb for tonifying and solidifying and giving you uh, clarity of mind. Um, it's interesting how the ancients used a lot of the herbs that we use in the kitchen I mean, people don't really use sage that much unless they're making <clears throat> stuffing or dressing for the turkey here in the U.S. I'm not really sure what they use sage for in other culinary traditions. But anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, you know, thyme, sage, basil, uh, cinnamon, things that we find in our kitchen and we don't really think of as herbs are incredibly powerful herbs. Um so sage was one of the herbs that I think it was Culpepper, who's a famous um, Western herbalist. He said that that any home that grows sage will have you know good luck and good health, you know, for all of their days or something. Uh, sage is strong; it makes a strong, strong tea. But again, it's very clarifying and solidifying. Uh, women can use it to stop um, menses and also when they want to stop breastfeeding. So it's just a very like, um, like I said, solidifying and stopping the flow of something. In terms of the hermit, I kind of feel like this card represents you're stopping your immediate relationship with your former community. It doesn't mean that you're never gonna go back, but you need to like pull all your resources into yourself to find your own way in order to bring those gifts back to the community. And so in that way, I do think that it speaks to kind of the energy of the sage, of sage plant. And then for the Wheel of Fortune, it's too, yeah, I have holy basil here, but I also, when I was just looking at this, I also think of the onion, which again is a vegetable or I guess it's a bulb. Okay, so I'll start with holy basil. So holy basil is a relative of basil. And again, that's just a culinary herb that we don't think too much of, but holy basil, um, Tulsi, is, have, has been used in Ayurvedic medicine for a very long time and has made its way into Western herbalism as an adaptogen. So what that means is this herb, Tulsi or holy basil, adapts to meet your needs, your system's needs. So if you're feeling really stressed out, you can take the tea of Tulsi, which tastes delicious by the way, and it will help you just kind of calm and center and keep you focused. 
On the other hand, if you're feeling fried and like super, you're so tired you can't sleep, holy basil will also meet you where you're at there and help your nervous system calm down. So that's what I mean by an adaptogen. It adapts to how you're feeling. So that's why I thought it was a good plant to reflect the Wheel of Fortune because kind of you're up, you're down, you're up, you're down. Also, onions are really amazing for drawing out whatever is making the system irritated. So that's another plant that can kind of be added to it. And then the last one of this uh, three um, series of right now is going to be Justice. And, you know, I was going to put Rose... Uh, in a different area um, because rose could be the lovers and rose could be temperance. Um, rose is amazing medicine and I think sometimes we forget that just like the um, culinary herbs, sage and basil and thyme, you know, you, you just kind of use them for their flavorings but they're really strong medicine. The same is true for rose. Rose is a heart tonic. It helps heal the heart especially in terms of grief and loss. And I'm talking about, I'm more talking about in terms of medicine, um, like the simple roses. So the Rosa Rugosa or the Rosa Alba, these, these guys, they're with the, like the simple, not the super fancy. I mean, you can use those but these have these have the whole thing. They have the the leaves and the hips, and the hips are the the fruiting body. Anyway, so in terms of justice, the reason I like it for the rose is that you've got the sword, so that's the thorns, and then you've got the balancing nature of her scales. And roses are good for medicine when you're trying to balance the joy and the sorrow of life. So it can help you maintain your equilibrium when it seems like something, you know, very, very painful has happened. It can allow you to come back to that center. Um, you know, plants don't usually exact a revenge <laughs> on things. I mean, you know, or like not even a revenge, but like um, a penalty, you know, maybe that you'd think of in terms of the justice card. What they do do is they can poison you um, or they get like contact dermatitis. So like poison ivy, for example, it's so poison ivy is just trying to mind its own business, but it's also usually trying to protect an area that's been overly disturbed. Um, and so I guess that's, you know, you could say that that's kind of a justice <laughs> sort of uh, retribution, but I liked the rose because when you're collecting medicine with Rose, you have to be very focused and aware of what you're doing. Because if you are not, and, and not take too much, like really balance what you're doing, it takes, takes a lot of effort. Because if you're not, you're gonna get some pretty painful reminders of that with the thorns. So I liked that aspect for justice of remembering that whatever you do has a consequence. And so make your choices knowing about those consequences and also staying really centered, heart centered. Okay, so that is gonna be the first video for the Garden Arcana. I think these are all plants that you can grow in your garden if you're interested. I'm definitely growing them in my garden because I find them so important and powerful. And I am going to tag um, Garden Goddess Tarot on YouTube, but also Candy, Soul, and Soil. So thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.